Hey everyone, welcome back. So after spending some time looking at uh, matrix uh, algebra, we get back to PCA. So in this video, we shall be taking a bit of an intuitive or an informal approach uh, to this topic. So before we proceed, a quick recap. Uh, so remember, we are dealing with P variables. Uh, so X has all of the P variables. And in PCA, we are interested in looking at linear combinations of these P variables. So Y1 is a linear combination of the P variables. Y2 is another linear combination and so on. Yp is the pth linear combination. So basically y1 through yp are linear combinations of these variables in x. And re remember we, we can write this more uh, concisely using vector product. So, a so y1 is a1 transpose x. So this denotes transpose. And a1 contains all of these p coefficients for the first com uh, first linear combination. a2 contains all the p coefficients for the second combination and so on. ap contains all of the p coefficients for the pth combination. Um, so PCA basically involves determining these coefficients. So we can rephrase these, this problem more concisely in this fashion. So basically, y is now, y vector is the transform data, and the goal is to determine this matrix P. Remember, its dimension is P by P. Uh, the first row of P is A1, all of the elements in A1, second row, all of the elements in A2, and so on. Uh, the last row are all of these elements in AP. And X is the original vector. So now our goal is to determine this uh, matrix P. So let's see how PCA looks like if you have an actual data set. So X is the N by P data matrix. That is, we have N uh, data on each of the P variables. And Y is now the transformed data matrix. It also has dimension N by P. So this is the transformation we are looking at. So what we are doing now that X is a matrix, right? We have N observations on each of the variables. So I am transforming each of the N samples here. So the transpose appears so that uh, dimensions match and the math works out. But basically I'm transforming uh, each, of, uh, each of the uh, samples or the entire data set now. So the question is how should we uh, select this transformation P and so that depends on what properties we want in Y right so we want Y to retain as much information as possible because Y is the transform data we want it to have uh, the maximum amount of information and we also want to reduce redundancy right so what do I mean by redundancy so we don't want uh, variables that are highly correlated with each other right because then they carry uh, you say the same amount of information, right? So if two variables are highly correlated, then you can predict one variable from the other one. So just including one of these in the data sets is enough. So the uh, first point uh, deals with the variance of the data, right? So you can think of in variance as representing the information in the data set, right? So if variance is zero, that means there is no information. And if you think about it, constants have zero variance, right? So constants don't really give you much information, uh, uh, give you much information. And the redundancy is about the covariance, right? Um, so we can address both of these uh, points uh, by dealing with variance and covariance of the data set or variance and covariance of Y. And therefore, we are going to look at the covariance matrix of Y. So if you think about it, the diagonal elements contain the variance and the off-diagonal contain the covariance. Uh, so by studying this covariance matrix of Y, we can address both of these points simultaneously. So just to make life easy, we are assuming that X and Y are both centered. So now the covariance of y is just basically y transpose y, okay? So y is a matrix, remember, right? N by P matrix. Um, so the transformation formula was, just to go back, y transpose was P times X transpose. 
So y transpose is p times x transpose, which in which implies that y is x times p transpose, a little bit of uh, basic um, matrix rules. So we take this one by n inside, and what we get is p x transpose x by n times p transpose. And if you notice that this is nothing but the covariance matrix of, or, sa or the sample covariance matrix, right, of uh, S, so that's Sx. So now just um, uh, just to point out some uh, quick properties or some properties of the sample covariance. So remember that it is symmetric. Uh, and if a matrix is symmetric, we know that we can do the spectral decomposition. So basically, we can write Sx in this fashion. So now you see why we took, uh, now you'll see now why we spent all of this time on some matrix algebra stuff, okay? So Sx, is equal to E D E transpose. E is a matrix whose columns are the eigenvectors of Sx and D is a diagonal containing the eigenvalues of Sx, right? So now if we substitute this formula for Sx in our equations, we get this. And now remember the goal was we want, so we are interested in looking at this um, covariance of y because we're looking for a particular structure right uh, one of the objectives was to reduce redundancy and i said reducing redundancy is the same as variables being uncorrelated um, so basically uh, if if this covariance matrix turns out to be a diagonal matrix right so if this sy turns out to be some kind of a diagonal matrix, it means that all of the covariances are zero, which means that all of the correlations are zero, right? So that is like as uh, uh, as non-redundant as it can be, right? If the covariance matrix of SY is a diagonal. So what do we need for this to be a diagonal? We know that D is a diagonal. If P times E becomes identity, and E transpose, P transpose becomes an uh, identity, uh, then um, our problem might be solved, right? So remember, another property of this matrix E is that E transpose E or E E transpose is identity. So this gives you a hint of what our P should look like. So take P to be E transpose, okay? And if you do that, we get this. So Sy is E transpose E, D, E transpose E. And which is finally D, which is a diagonal matrix. So to summarize what we are doing in PCA is, so if we are looking at this transformation, right? Yt is E transpose times Xt now, so because P was equal to E transpose. And now E uh, is a matrix whose columns, so E is a matrix whose columns are all of the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix. Again, what do we do in PCA? We have a data set, we calculate its covariance, we calculate the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix, we find out what E is, and we do this transformation, okay? So just a different perspective on this. Remember that from our previous videos that E forms a basis system. And if you remember the change of basis stuff that we did, if I have any vector m, right, and if I multiply with this E inverse m, right, and because of the special characteristics of E, because it's, uh, we know that E inverse is E transpose, so we have studied this before, right? But basically, this m e, which is E inverse times m, is going to represent the coordinates of m with respect to this new basis. So multiplying m by inverse of a basis uh, changes the coordinates of that um, vector m uh, and gives us coordinates with respect to the new basis, that is e. e inverse is the same as e transpose. Therefore, uh, if you think about it, what we are doing here is a change of basis, right? So we are taking each sample point and we are changing its basis. So we, so basically PCA also represents a change of basis. So there are many ways to think about PCA and basis approach is one of them. 
so because uh, PCA involves uh, looking at linear combinations, we should study some properties of linear combinations. So I have two vectors, two variables, and it could have been p variables. I've just taken two for convenience. Uh, x tilde has the two variables. Mu one is a mean or the expectation of x one, and so on. And uh, sigma is covariance matrix. So this is a two by two matrix right now. B and C just contain a bunch of constants. Okay. So with this, let's take a look at some of the basic linear properties. Uh, I'm sure most of you, uh, especially if you've taken a uh, probability course, you, are, you should be familiar with this already. So expectation of B1 times X1. X1 is now a number, right? X tilde is a vector, but X1 is a number or a scalar. B1 is a number. So you can pull the expectation uh, or this B come, B1 comes out and you get this. Now C transpose times X tilde, this is a vector product or an or inner product, right? So C transpose times X tilde is basically C1 times X1 plus C2 times X2. Again, you can separate out the expectations and take it inside and then you get uh, this. This is an important one. Variance of this linear combination, right? So C transpose X tilde is basically linear combination of X1 and X2, right? So, variance of linear combination is just this, C transpose sigma times C. We will be using this property, so make sure, so take note of this. Covariance between B transpose X tilde and X transpose X tilde. So, first of all, think about this. Does it make sense to ask for covariance between these two things? B transpose X tilde is going to be a number, right? C transpose X tilde is also a number or uh, this is a variable, this is another single variable, right? So we can look, ask for covariance between two variables, right? So none of these are vectors, none of these things on either side of the comma are vectors. So the answer to this is B transpose sigma C, B transpose is one by two, sigma is two by two, this is two by one, so the end product is also a one by one matrix or a number okay so always think if the dimensions match up okay so these are linear uh, um, properties of linear combinations these last two are important and we will be using them for uh, especially for the uh, PCA so in case we have a sample now of size uh, n on p variables all of the linear combination properties just follow, uh, except you'll just replace the population mean with the sample mean. So instead of mu, mu1, you will have x1 bar. Instead of sigma, you will have the sample covariance matrix. So that's exactly what is going on in this slide. So that is all for this video. In the next one, we shall take a little bit more rigorous and or a formal approach to PCA. See ya.